In 2018, a Facebook post went viral. It was posted by a bodybuilder and stated, This is my son's friend Jared. Before I hear any wisecracks, Jared's been fighting lung cancer and we almost lost him. He has recently cleared to work out. His arms measured eight and a quarter inches, his legs just over 12. I'm taking him under my wing. Stay tuned for his progress. And what Jared did next shocked millions. Would you say you're a happy kid? I would, for the most part, definitely as like it going through elementary school and uh, middle school and junior high. Like I was a very happy child. And, you know, I always a smile on my face and was always a pleasant person. Jared was born with cystic fibrosis. It makes the mucus in people thicker, which causes problems in the lungs and digestive system. The small airways get clogged up, causing infections and over time damage to the lungs. It has many unpleasant symptoms, which get worse with time. In 1962, the life expectancy was just 10 years old. But thanks to medical advances, it's now higher if you take antibiotics, medicines, enzymes, nebulizers, among many other treatments. Despite this challenge, he was able to have a somewhat decent childhood. My mother, my grandpa, and my brother, they were always right there for me at the drop of a hat. It was, they have been awesome throughout my entire life. My grandpa was, was someone I always looked up to and someone I was always very close with because we were very similar. However, after progressing into his teenage years, his condition began to deteriorate despite all of the treatment he went through. Cystic fibrosis, or CF, tends to get worse with time, and Jared slowly began to realize this harsh reality. It started to just turn into, I'm probably not gonna be here a lot because I learned in middle school, when I was growing up, the average lifespan of someone with cystic fibrosis was 25. And I was like, wow, that's, that's really soon. Understandably, Jared's outlook became more and more negative. With all of the things he had to go through, his future looked dark. Once I reached high school, it reached the point where it's like all that positivity and outlook for a great life was just out the window at that point. I kind of felt cheated out of the prospect of a good life. At around 19 years old, things began to spiral out of control as Jared began skipping treatments. After all, he just felt like he was prolonging the inevitable. From there, it just got worse. Instead of trying to have a better quality of life, I just focused on what I could do to have the most fun. You know, that, that was bad. Essentially, he had given up hope. That's when I really stopped doing any of my treatments, any of my medicines. I didn't care at that point. I would put myself in the hospital for two weeks every, every like three or four months. His lung function was dropping rapidly and Jared became increasingly ill and depressed, eventually reaching the point where he had a conversation with his mother about setting up a hospice in Will, ready to die. I think that's probably the hardest conversation I've ever had in my life. Um, I just, I remember fully accepting that and um, just the absolute terrified look my mother had on her face. Not long after the conversation, things took a turn for the worst. It got substantially worse overnight. It was almost like I was drowning, but without without being in water. It was it was terrifying. It was starting to suffocate my brain. I remember calling my mother and having her pick me up to go. I started hallucinating. The moment they saw me, they really went into like the doctors and nurses, they kicked it into high gear because they were like, I remember them telling me that if I had waited maybe an hour or two, that I wouldn't have had a chance to come back from it. Jared had now lost around 70% of his lung function and was essentially on the brink of death. After seeing his family's reaction, he began taking his treatments, not for himself, but for his mother, brother, and grandfather. Despite how he felt, he saw the effect it had on his family. He didn't want all of the support he received to feel wasted and had made a deal with his grandfather. He made a promise to him that if he had taken care of himself, because he was just as stubborn as I was <laughs> when it came to hospitals and our own health, um, that if he had went to get something checked out and taken care of, that I would actually start taking care of myself 
unfortunately, after he held up his end of the bargain, he had passed away a few days later. It was now Jared's turn to hold his end of the bargain, so he got in contact with a friend whose dad owned a gym with the idea to start weightlifting, to which his friend suggested starting at 5 a.m. Oh man, I was just like, uh, five in the morning, huh? Yeah, man, best time to go. And I was like, okay. <laughs> of course, Jared had his doubts. So a lot of it was just getting out of my own head and trying to tell myself that I, I belonged in the gym, regardless of what, what I looked like. Just to clarify, the gym Jared was about to enter was no Planet Fitness. A single garage door entrance, zero windows and concrete walls plastered with posters of all the bodybuilders who had trained there and went pro. It was pretty much the definition of an old school bodybuilding gym. And as for the owner, Mr. Donnelly, or Jared's coach. Kind of, kind of intimidating. Yeah, he's a big guy. Um, if. You see, Mr. Donnelly wasn't your average trainer. He was a respected old school bodybuilder who had trained with the likes of Arnold and Lou Ferrigno. He's, he's very caring. It, it was new for him to work with someone with my kind of with my kind of disease, but he definitely took the time to learn. He was just so knowledgeable. It's important to point out weightlifting wasn't recommended for CF patients at the time. The doctors were skeptical about me doing weightlifting. They were like, well, you should do cardio and this and that. I was like, yeah, that's, that's awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go do weightlifting. So after this Facebook post, Jared would begin his transformation. And, oh man, it, it took off from there. The, the whole waking up early to work out, I, I don't know why, but I loved it. After gaining substantial muscle, he became more and more inspired by the bodybuilders on the wall. I kept looking at everyone that was on the wall and I was like, I wanna be up there. That's, that's, that's where I wanna be next. To do this, Jared would need to start training for a bodybuilding competition. I didn't want a handicap. I wanted to beat every normal healthy person on the stage and just really, really drive that one home. <laughs> After three months, Jared had gained 30 pounds and looked like a different person. Despite his condition, he had placed fourth in his first ever bodybuilding competition and his transformation was incredible. Of course, this inspired thousands of people across the internet. A man with cystic fibrosis is now a competitive bodybuilder. Dominic Garcia and Wheat Ridge and Dom, what an incredible journey. But this wasn't the best part. For Jared, he had achieved something far greater. The making sure that everything my family had done for me to help me live a better quality of life wasn't going to waste anymore especially when it came to my mother, that all her hard work and all her sacrifices were in vain. Didn't your lung function jump up as well? Substantially. Um, I went from having like a baseline of 30-ish to 35% lung function to at that time, 45 to 50%. Jared had kept his promise to his grandfather. He had not only slowed his CF from worsening, but had managed to regain lung function. Which is crazy because a lot of the times with cystic fibrosis patients, once we lose that lung function, not very common for us to get it back. Not only did Jared complete an insane physical transformation, but it improved his health substantially with bodybuilding, something he probably shouldn't have been doing. Love my doctors, but like I said, I'm just a very stubborn person. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go do this anyway. <laughs> kind of seems you like proving them wrong as well. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely that's definitely one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> it's actually really nice sometimes. It's like it can help open up some people's eyes. They're like, oh well, 
Shit, he did it. He did it that way. After the competition, Jared moved from his hometown to Denver to start a new chapter and expand his horizons. Definitely reached a dark moment in my life because I just I didn't know anyone out here and I was all by myself. But I just looked at it like it's gonna get better. I'm gonna make it get better. Unfortunately, cystic fibrosis still tends to get worse over time, even after all of the treatment. But despite this, Jared's worked full time for most of his life. He achieved his personal training certificate and is studying nutrition so he can help people who struggle to gain weight like he did. And on top of all this, he launched a motivational clothing company for people who refuse to give up. I want to be able to help people um, through and through. As easy as it would be for Jared to revert to his old way of thinking, the most impressive thing he was able to do was to transform his mindset from living with CF to CF living with him. And while he may never get to experience a healthy life without CF, he's pretty much a personification of determination and not giving up. as long as you're willing to uh, put up that the fight and make the sacrifices like it might seem like something's so far out of reach or it's it's never gonna happen as long as you are constantly and actively thinking to yourself that you can do it it's it's gonna come one way or another it might be a different road than someone else but you put that attitude up of I can do this it's it's gonna happen.